Hi everybody and welcome to our presentation on dynamic authentication in NeoLoad. So NeoLoad actually supports several authentication schemes and in this presentation you'll learn how to configure authentication by form, by client certificate, and integrate it into Windows. So here we go. We're going to record a form-based authentication. So to do that we'll start recording and we'll name that virtual user form user and then we'll start our recording create a container go to our home page and sign in and then we'll stop the recording We're just going clicking the stop button up at the top we'll click through perfect so the form authentication is defined request side so what we're going to want to do is find the request containing the connection information so that we can make it dynamic. We're just going to make our test a little bit more realistic. So we're going to go into our virtual user and flag any requests whose definition contains our password and username, which happen to be the same in this case. We'll go into our signing container and find the information sent to the server during the recording. So as you can see, this includes both the username and password, which we are going to change using a NeoLoad variable. So to do that, we'll double click on our password. We'll go into our variables manager and then we'll use a file variable. So we're just going to go ahead and double click on that. We're going to rename it and then select a file to import. And then we're going to rename them username and password here and we're going to change it up for each virtual user. We'll select that variable and import it into NeoLoad. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the username. So now when the load test is launched, each virtual user will log in using the values taken from these files, making their authentication dynamic for your test. So now we're going to configure NeoLoad for authentication using a client certificate. So we'll go ahead and click on Edit, Preferences, Underneath our project settings, you'll find the certificate manager. So step one, you're just going to import the certificates. And then move on to step two, where you'll choose a certificate for the scenario recording. And then we'll move on to step three, in which you will choose the certificates to be used during the load test. That will include several simultaneous virtual users. So when the load test is launched, each virtual user will log in using the specified certificates, again making the authentication dynamic. So now we're going to record an NTLM authentication using NeoLoad. So we're going to start our recording. We'll rename our virtual user. Go ahead and type in our container. Log into our wiki. Okay, so NeoLoad is going to recognize NTLM authentication and a pop-up window will prompt the user for their login information. So we'll give our username and our password. We'll just create another container, we'll go to a different page, and then we'll stop our recording. So we'll just click through. So the NTLM authentication is defined server-side, and we're going to go ahead and make that dynamic. So we'll click into our server. And we're going to change the login and password using a NeoLoad variable. So we'll open up our variables manager, create a new variable, and we're going to choose a list variable. So let's go ahead and double click. We'll rename it. We'll add a column and some values, and then we'll start adding logins and password information. And we'll just create three different values here. And then we're going to change it up for each virtual user. And now we'll replace the recorded values with our variables we just created. So we'll select the login and then we'll go back and select the password variable. Perfect. So now when the load test is launched, each virtual user will log in using the values taken from the list you just created. Again, the authentication is going to be dynamic. So now what we're going to do is record a Kiros authentication. 
though some configuration files are going to need to be modified for NeoLoad to be compatible with this method. So we're going to go into our controller properties file, which can be found in the NeoLoad installation directories configuration folder. And we'll click on that. We're going to go ahead and replace the NTLM authentication protocol with the Spinego protocol for Kerberos. We'll save that. So now we're going to modify the KRB5 configuration file. And we'll set Kerberos domain by default. So for each Kerberos domain, we must now specify the key distribution center, or KDC. So we'll go ahead and do that. So last but not least, we're going to link the Active Directory domain to the Kerberos domain. So the changes are going to be effective once NeoLoad restarts, and then the scenario recording is just going to take place normally. So we'll just start a recording and rename our virtual user. We'll go ahead and log in. So Neolid is going to recognize the Kerberos authentication, and a pop-up window is again going to prompt the user for their username and password information. And then we're just going to take another action, and we're going to stop the recording. So the Kerberos authentication is defined server-side. We're going to go ahead and make it dynamic. Just go into our server here. And then we're just going to replace the recorded values with the variables that we created for the last test. So we'll just replace our login information with the variable, as well as our password information. So when your load test is launched, each virtual user is going to log in using those values taken from the lists, and their authentication is dynamic. So thank you so much for joining us today. That's all we have for you. Um, take a look at the additional resources on this slide, and please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. Thank you.